Hello ladies and gentlemen, hello my friends and welcome to this new edition of Sartorial Talks. Today we're going to start a series of video untitled Do You Speak Sartorial? And why we decided to do some kind of a glossary or dictionary about the sartorial vocabulary. But it's easy to understand. Since a couple of years, and I would say more three, four years, we witnessed with Sonia that more and more young people, young gentlemen specifically, were joining our um, channel because they are interested in learning more and about everything related to the tutorial world. The problem they have, and most of them will receive hundreds of questions, how, what's the difference between an Oxford and a Derby, Mr. Jacome? What um, Do I have to put perforation uh, or broguing on my shoes? Uh, do broguing are more formal or less formal than non-broguing shoes? You know, these kind of things. So I thought it was very useful, and it might be very useful for you to have a little crash course or a few crash courses on how to name your beautiful and beloved shoes. So the first question, who is constantly coming, that people, it's very complicated to decipher the difference between an Oxford and a Derby, because these are the most common shoes, as long as leather shoes are concerned. Of course, we don't speak about sneakers today. So the difference is very, very easy to understand, and I'm going to try once for all to make you able, and at a glance, to say, okay, that's a Derby, that's an Oxford. It's very simple. You have to look at the lacing place. Okay, this is, ladies and gentlemen, an Oxford. That is to say, it's what we call a closed lace. That is to say, you, you have the vamp of the shoe, and there's just a cut in the middle in which the eyelet are, uh, are made. So it's, there's nothing else, it's called a closed lace. And a derby? i show you a derby, not the same style, but just to explain you the difference is this. It's, it's called an open lace. L listen, you see, the difference between this one and this one is very easy. You see here, there are two pieces of leather. We call them the quarters that are sewn directly on the vamp. Here, nothing is sewn. It's directly the vamp. Here, it is sewn above the vamp to make it a little bit more easy to lace. So you got that's the basic thing that you, c you have to remember. If you have pieces of leather called the quarter that are sewn above the vans, then, ladies and gentlemen, this is a derby. If you have no quarters sewn, that only the laces is done by the cut, then this is an Oxford. Now, if I show you this and this, you say, oh, oh, oh what is that? because it doesn't look the same. Or if I show you this and this, for example, all of them are Oxford, ladies and gentlemen. And so you may ask yourself, how do I make the difference if I want to order this one? How do I call it? Or if I want to um, call my shoemaker and I said, I want to order this one, how do I call it? I'm going to explain to you in five minutes. Uh, let's start with the beginning. The first one, it's, it's a Oxford, because there's no thing soon above. It's just a simple piece of leather cut in the middle for the laces, and this one is called a hole cut. A hole cut, why? Because there's nothing else but the cut. That's it. This is um, oh, the famous Alessandro by Berluti in France. Beautiful, iconic shoe. This is my pair, ladies and gentlemen. I bought this pair in 2006. Okay, I have to be uh, honest with you, I didn't wear it a lot because Berlutis, you don't sing in the rain with your Berlutis. It's more like precious shoes, extremely stylish, but you see, almost 20 years after, they still look extremely, extremely well. So this is what we call a hole cut. You see, though, nothing at the toe section, it's just a piece of leather. It is probably looked upon for many people as, as the most elegant shoe because there's nothing, it's just the beauty of the shape of the shoe that is uh, making the personality of this. Okay, so that's a whole cut. Now, let's go a little bit further. Look at this one, for example. It's the same principle. It's an Oxford, but this one, we call it a capto Oxford. Why? Because you see, unlike this one, there's a piece of leather here. It, we call it a cap toe that has been added to the shoe with uh, stitching here. So this is what we call a cap toe 
Oxford. You understand? This is very, very easy. So the first region on the shoe you have to look at is the toe box. Okay? This one is called a cap toe. And now look at this one. It looks pretty much the same. Okay? But there are two differences on those ones. The first difference is that this is a cap toe, but it's a straight line. This one has a cap toe, but it's not a cap toe. We call it a wing tip. That is to say, at the toe section, instead of having something straight like a cap toe, you have a wing tip, that is to say, like a wave. In France, we call it a golf toe because it looks like a golf shoe, pretty much. But this is what we call a wing tip. So you see immediately the difference? Cap toe, straight line. Wing tip, it's, it's like a wave. Personally, I, I think that this is more formal than this. The wing tip is immediately a little bit less formal, a little bit more sporty, I mean, in the sense that it's still sartorial but sporty, then this one is more austere and more straight. And now what's the main difference between those ones? You can see it's very easy to determine. It's the broguing. The broguing are this perforation that you see everywhere, okay? On this one you can see, but uh, basically there are no broguing except on the toe with the, this medallion. But the rest, no broguing. So it's a bit more formal. This one is broguing everywhere. So if I describe this shoe and I see a lot of brogues, I would, I would call it a brog Oxford with a wingtip. So as broguing is perforation, we'd call it brogues, uh, uh, broguing. Uh, even in French, we say un brogue. This is very strange. You know, sometimes you are invaded our beautiful language. And so this one, with, as it has a lot of perforation everywhere, we can call it a brogue Oxford with a wingtip. Very easy. This one, I remind you, will be an, a cap toe Oxford. A cap toe Oxford. And you don't say there's no brog because it, it's useless to say it because there's no brogs. Okay? And you will find in the, on the market shoes like that but with a little bit less brogs, less perforation. Maybe only here, but not too much here or not too much here. We can call it a half brog. You see, it's just the number of perforation that show you if it's a full brog or a half brog. Let's take another example, and with this one, I'm going to show you something which, in terms of semantic, is very important. This one, how would you describe this one? Well, it's an Oxford, okay, because it's a cloth lace, but it's a, it has a cap toe, you remember this thing? A cap toe with a straight line. But this one has no perforation. This could be called a half brog or semi brog because it has a, just a little bit of perforation. Very, but this one has something very specific. You see the line of the stitching here? It's going all the way to the back of the shoe. Unlike this one in which you have a, 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 a wave. It goes like that and like that. This one, it goes straight to the back. We call it a Balmoral stitching. And this is where I have to be uh, very uh, specific on that. Because in your country, I mean in America specifically, most of people make the confusion between an Oxford, which is the, this is this kind of shoe, it's a global appellation, and they I have a tendency to call this a Balmoral. This is a mistake, semantically speaking, because Balmoral describes only the line of stitching here that is going straight to the back of the shoe. This is what we call a Balmoral stitching. So the next time you see a pair like that, you can say, it's a Balmoral Oxford, not because it's an Oxford only, but because of the line of stitching that goes straight to the back of the shoe. You may say in your head, okay, Jacome, who really cares, you know, that you, 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 you ask for an Oxford, you call this a Balmoral? Well, we do care because we think that vocabulary is everything. If you don't have the right vocabulary to exchange ideas with people, you're going to see that lit little by little you're going to lose the meaning of words, and when you look the meaning of words, you lose the meaning of things, and maybe ultimately the meaning of life. I don't want to go too far on that, but semantic, saying the right words for the right idea, it's fundamental. And I believe we live in a world that is losing this. It's the case in France. I don't know if it is the case in America or in England, but in France we have to fight against this, and this is why we wanted to make this series of episodes. So, as a, uh, we're going to wrap up the Oxford. Okay, so you understand an Oxford close lace with, I would say, four big figures of style. The whole cut, nothing but a piece of leather and a cut. Then you have the cap toe Oxford, that is to say, with a cap on the toe, 
which is stitched on the toe. That's this one, so a cap toe Oxford. Then you have this one who has a wingtip, so it's not a cap toe, it's a wingtip, and on top of that he has a lot of perforation. So we will call this a, a, a brog Oxford with a wingtip, or you can go saying a wingtip because you can also have a wingtip without perforation, but not too much on that because it can be very confusing. And then this one, and I really want you to remember that, it's called um, a Balmoral Oxford. That is to say, it's an Oxford with a capto, but this one, the more specific thing that you notice immediately is not the capto, but it's the stitching here, you see? So you name the thing with this more visible specificity. And so please, please, please stop, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm, I'm, I'm talking to the professional, calling a Balmoral an Oxford. No, an Oxford can be a Balmoral, but uh, you can't call every Oxford a Balmoral because this is a mistake. Now let's switch quickly to the Derbys. So I remind you, Oxford, Derbys. The main difference is this, okay? These two quarters that are sewn directly on the shoe. Oh, in terms of the sewing and the, and the derby there, so now you can find two different kinds of derby in the where they are stitched on the vamp. The vamp, I remind you, is this part of the shoe, okay? This one, for example, which is a classic, we call it a classic derby because you see the flap or the quarters, we call it the quarters when people say flap, are sewn here at the bottom of the heel, so it's sewn like that, okay? Thought. And then you have the second one, which is called a blucher, that is to say, you can see it's not sewn here, it's sewn here at the bottom of the lacing area. So this is called a blucher and it, it makes here, you can see it, not, this one is not, we're gonna put pictures, it's gonna be more um, easy to see, but this is, looks like a hockey cross. This is what we call a blucher, okay? And now, in terms of derbies, uh, when you look at this one, and then you look at this one, you say, my God, it's very different. Are there two derbies? Of course, it are two derbies, why? Because it's an open lace. Look at this one, famous Arca from Corte France. You can see directly, it's so evident that you see, these are the quarters that are sewn. On this case, as it looks like a blucher actually, it's sewn at the bottom here, even it doesn't have the cross, but it's very sophisticated. Huh? But look at that, you see? So it's a derby, but what's the difference between this one and this one? Very easy, the design of course, but the number of eyelets. So when you describe a derby, this one is a five eyelet derby, this one is also a five eyelet derby, this one is a two eyelet derby. And I know our friend Alexis from Colincourt is even making a one eyelet derby. Uh, rule of thumb, the less you have eyelets, the more it is formal, the more it is chic, the more it is elegant. The more you have eyelet, the more it is sporty. So you understand? Two eyelets, the eyelets, I remind you, is just the holes in which you put the, the laces, we call the eyelet, okay? So two eyelets, very chic, very distinguished, very classy. Five eyelet, beautiful but more sporty. You understand? So the number of eyelets is the main thing that will make a difference between a derby and another derby. And of course, the type of skin, these ones are, um, how do you call it, suede, okay? This one is calf. You can have a lot of different styles. I don't want to go too much because you can have many, many different styles. And after, if you want to describe this one as a derby, you go back to the basic knowledge that I gave you for the Oxford, for example. This one is, we will describe it as a wingtip brog derby. You understand? Wingtip because it has a wingtip and not um, um, a cap toe. It has a lot of broguing, so we can say it's a brog, and it, it, it has those two quarters, those flaps, and so we can call it a brog. So it's a brog derby with a wingtip. You understand? It's very easy. Uh, this one, for example, is a little bit different because it doesn't have any brogs. So you call it a derby. Actually, it's a blucher because you see this design as a cross of a hockey cross. And this one has a, a, we call a lake, something which is stitched on the top of the thing. Okay, so we couldn't go further and further because there are hundreds of different styles and stuff like that. What I wanted you to remember is first of all the difference between an Oxford and a Derby. Now I think you're good on that. Oxford, closed laces. Derby, open laces with quarters or flaps that are sewn 
above. Uh, rule of thumb, uh, if you want to be very formal, very chic, Oxford. If you want to be a little bit more sporty, Derby's. even if you look at this from Corte, this is very chic too. So you see, there's no real rules. It's just a matter of understanding. The one point that might interest a lot of you is that if you have big feet, if you are specifically uh, have problems to lace your, sh your feet, go for derbies because it's easy to see. You have those flaps that give you more freedom of movement inside your shoes. Now, as a wrap-up, we're going to play a game. We're going to do a quiz. I'm going to ask you, I'm going to show you, and we, you will have five seconds to name the shoe. And don't cheat. Don't go at the beginning of this episode and look at what I said, okay? Uh, it's, just, it's just fun to play with words, and it's important that you really integrate those words in your mind so that now, from now on, at least in this era of shoes, you can name the right thing with the right vocabulary. It's important. So, okay, let's go. How would you name this shoe? Okay. It is an Oxford, but it's a whole cut Oxford. Or we can also say a one cut Oxford. That is to say, there's nothing here. So you don't have to describe anything. It's just a cut for the holes, for the laces, for the eyelets. Okay, this is a beautiful Alessandro, three eyelet, all cut, uh, from Berluti in Paris. Now let's go for the next one. How would you name this one? Okay, actually it's a beautiful shoe. You could name it a beautiful shoe. But to get a little bit beyond that, it's a capital Oxford. Why? Because you have this cap. It's a little like a cap. It's a piece of leather that is added to the vamp. So it's called a capital Oxford. And we call it a capital also because it's straight, like a cap. Okay, a capital Oxford. Beautiful, this one is a bespoke by Mario Bemer in Florence. It's one of my favorites. It's beautiful because, because burgundy, this kind of a color, goes with practically everything. Uh, and I know it's very popular in America, by the way. Okay, let's try, mm, for example, now this one. How would you name this wonderful shoe? Okay, so you got it. It's a derby. Uh, you see, because there are things added on the vamp. And this one, I t just taught you, you just say it's a two eyelet derby. Why? Because when you describe derbies and there's nothing else to show than, than uh, the number of eyelets, you just describe it by the number of eyelets. This is a two eyelet derby by Corte, and it's the Arca model. Very, very famous, beautiful, by the way. Now, let's continue with this one. Mm, this one is a little bit more tricky. How would you call this one? It looks like the very classic one, but it has a very specific way. We have a specific way to name it. It's your turn. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I really do hope you remember this one, okay? So, as you can see, it's a capital, Oxford. It's an Oxford with a capital. But he has a special design here. The line of stitching goes all the way to the end of the shoe. So it's a Balmoral Oxford with a capital. But if you say a Balmoral Oxford, it's sufficient. Everybody understands it's because you have this line. That very, it's, very, um, uh, it's not rare to see this on boots, by the way. We call them Balmoral boots because of the stitching of the line. So you remember this one? It's a Balmoral capital Oxford, if we want to be totally complete. Now, let's continue and maybe finish with this one. How would you call this one? Oh, it's a beautiful shoe. Okay, so as you see, there's a lot of perforation. There's a wingtip, so we call it a wingtip brog. I think it's the best thing, a wingtip brog. Brog because there's a lot of perforation and wingtip because there's a wave. It's not a capto, it's a wave. We're gonna try to do the same thing with boots and with loafers because we know that boots and loafers are very agreeable. But for now, I hope you will forever remember that uh, how to make the difference between an Oxford and a Derby and stop making the mistake to call an Oxford a Balmoral because a Balmoral can be an Oxford, but not all Oxford are Balmorals. I give you an appointment in the next episode of Sartorial Talks. In the meantime, 
dress well and buy beautiful shoes, please. You're never going to regret investing in good leather shoes. See you soon, my friends. Bye-bye. <laughs>